remember to like and subscribe. Welcome to my video on the Galileo Callisto. I'm going to go over how to set up this thing, some basic best practices, and an overview. Please look in the description for all the timestamps. If you don't want to sit through this whole video and there's a specific topic you have, I've laid those out as chapters in the description below, so go ahead and click that. Another disclaimer I wanted to give is that this video is not intended to be used for system optimization or phase alignment. Those topics will be covered in later videos. Anyway, moving on, looking at the front from left to right, we see our inputs A, B, C, D, E, F, and signal meters for those, signal meter lights, and clip warning, and mutes. Next to those, we see our 16 outputs, again with mute buttons and signal lights. Next to that is our main screen menu. There's some buttons and encoders there. Moving to the back. Looking at the back from left to right, we have our PowerCon power supply input, our local area network connection, then our inputs. Now, it's important to know that the top ACE inputs can be switched between AES and analog XLR. Next to them is our 16 outputs. Now, this is a picture of a standard analog output. The one I'm going to be using you for this video, and I'll go into that a little bit, is an AES model where the top row are AES outputs and the bottom row is analog. Next, I'm going to show you guys how to set up Compass and get this guy launched. So, I have my power supply hooked in. I have a Cat5 cable hooked up to the LAN port, and that's running to a switch on top. From the switch, I have an additional Cat5 running from that to the LAN port on the laptop that I'm going to use to host Compass. Okay, looking at the front panel, there's a few things we want to get done first. First, I want you to go into the network settings and make sure that we're set to DHCP. I'm going to show you guys how to set up static at a later point, but for most people getting this done, we're going to start with DHCP. I've downloaded the latest version of Compass for the product I'm using, which is Galileo Callisto, so I need to use version 3.12.1 .1 or higher. If you're using an older Galileo, you're going to have to use a earlier version of Compass, and you're going to have to contact your Meyer rep to get a hold of that. Once you've created an account with Meyer, you can have access to all their software that they offer online. Here's a list of all the current versions of Compass. I'm now going to click the Compass 3.12.1 .1 version app. First thing I want you to do after you've launched your Compass app is click on the Galileo tab second to the right. Once you click on the Galileo tab, you're going to see the status as not detected and you're going to see use virtual as a selectable item. If you want, if you don't have anything hooked up, you can click use virtual and it'll load a virtual profile for you that you can kind of click around and become familiar with the interface. But since we're using real Galileo, I want you to click the refresh button. Once you've done this, your Galileo is going to be found. It's going to show the name, IP address of it, and current firmware version. Now that that's set up, we can jump right in. First thing, if you go into Project, you could select Factory Defaults. And if you look here, it's not selectable. That's because I have menu options locked out so you don't accidentally click something. An easy way to go through this, I have a whole video on menu lockout if you want to click the link above to go to it. The quick way to edit this, I'll show you here. Go into our settings, access, and we're going to set all. Now everything should work. Going back into our project, factory defaults is selected, and I'm going to recall that. And now we're going to start from a clean slate. Going back through our settings in the network tab, when I click edit network settings, this is where we could select between DHCP and setting a static IP. I'm going to walk you through that real quick. You're going to want to select static and then type in your desired IP address here. And then you are going to exit. Even if you don't exit after this point, the Galileo is going to become a virtual item and you can't edit anything until you change your adapter settings and relaunch the application. This is again why we're doing this tutorial using DHCP. I plan on doing future tutorials on basic networking practices, 
but I'll do a quick one here for you guys just in case you've never done it before. So I'm using Windows on this, so in Windows you want to open up your system preferences and click on Network. Then you're going to click on Change Adapter Options. Within Adapter Options, we're going to click on Internet Protocol Version 4, TCP, IPv4, Properties. Once we're in this menu, we're going to enter the static IP information associated with our Galileo. Again, I'm going to do a basic networking tutorial in a future video. And if this is a little over your head, just go ahead and leave it at DHCP. Back into the Galileo, moving on. This is our input and output section. This is really important because this is where we can change our input channel types. So the top row, ACE in blue, if you saw defaulted to AES, and the bottom row, BDF, defaulted to analog. There's a little soft button above them, as you can see. You can click between analog and AES, selecting that input channel type. In this same page, there's also the ability to choose your input and output voltage ranges with a difference of 6 dB, giving you the choice of plus 20 dB or plus 26 dB on all inputs and outputs. The next tab is our SIM3 selection. I don't have a SIM3, so I can't do anything there. The next one's our environment tab. I highly recommend you guys clicking this and putting the information in when you can. The differences you're going to get out of your PA from a sea level to a more elevated area, especially the differences in humidity, are worth paying attention to. After that, we have our access tab. Again, this is the tab where you're going to find all the options that you're able to access at all. And if your front menu is locked out, this is the menu you're going to have to click in and then click front panel in order to be able to access front panel. There's another video in this channel on what to do if the front panel is locked out. You could check it out in this playlist. The next tab, delay integration, is really important. In here, you're going to see some profiles for, um, for some line array elements in here. I'll go over that again in a little bit. The next tab is linking groups. And the last tab is a log of everything that's happened. Now, clicking on the Callisto map. This is our main overview. Think of the Callisto map button as a home button. You can access any of the detailed features through the tabs at the top, but you can also click any of the buttons within the Callisto map to go directly to that field. At the very left, we see all 16 of our processing output EQs. If I click the EQ button, I go right into here and I could see some things. The initial channel settings, our parametric EQ, U-shaping, and then if I click this tab and handles up in the top, I'm going to turn on our high pass, low pass filter visibility, as well as in the response tab in the top right, the ability to view phase response in relation to our EQ changes. Give you a quick little visual representation. So phase response is turned on, and you could see that popping up now. In initial channel settings, this is where we're going to find our high pass and low pass filters, as well as the ability to bypass any of the EQs. And here's a simple example of the high pass and low pass. If you're using an older Galileo 616 and you're wondering how come there's no high pass or low pass filters, that's because they didn't exist until later versions of the Galileo. If I go back to the Callisto map, back into the input section, if I click them, I can label them. I can do this on the outputs too. And I'm going to walk you through a quick little just mock setup. We'll call this left, right array, center fills, and subwoofer. Now if I click summing matrix up here, I'm going to get rid of the default settings and we're going to just do some mock line array shading real quick. We'll pretend line array left has four zones I want to shade and four on the right. We have two center fill zones I want to be able to manipulate and two subs I want to be able to manipulate. Next is our input masters. We can mute and adjust here as needed. And output, same thing, just 16 of these, but we can attenuate and mute as needed right here.
back in the Callisto map. We're going to make sure EQ is on. We're going to go into delay integration. I'm going to load a couple profiles in real quick. And then I'm going to make sure the day delay integration output assignments to what I kind of want. Again, I'm just mocking them up real quick. And back at the Callisto map is a general overview of everything I've just done. Looking back at the Callisto map, you could see the blue knobs. These represent input and output delay, and the red knobs represent gain on the input and output. Good place to start. Again, you can go up into the project tab, and there's plenty of things in here. So there's lots of Meyer profiles and great starting points in here that they have put in to get you going. This is also, if you look at the bottom of the screen where it says Save Project, this is at any time, if you save your project and you want to recall it, this is where it's going to land. Again, if you notice the Save Project button in the bottom left and any tab within the Galileo tab I'm clicking, that will appear. So at any point in time, you can save your project, you can update any work you've done and it will update it to that project file, and then you can recall it at a later time. Again, thanks for watching. This is just kind of a general overview. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments for me. Remember to like and subscribe.